Today we will extend the torsional vibration uh, using finite element method. Today especially we will be dealing with the uh, geared system and uh, in previous lectures we have covered the geared pair using uh, their equivalent uh, system approach uh, or even with the transfer matrix method. So, today we will extend the uh, gear element, uh, we will develop the gear element using finite element method and we will see that how this gear element can be used for either ge uh, geared system or for even branch system. And uh, uh, in this particular uh, torsional vibration of the uh, geared system, we will extend even if, uh, if there is a flexibility at the gear tooth, how it can be incorporated in the finite element formulation. So, basically this is the overall uh, overview of the lecture in which, in which we will be developing the, we will be doing the torsional vibration of geared and branch system using finite element method. We will do the development of the gear element and uh, we will see if gear contact is having flexibility uh, that can uh, how we can able to incorporate in the uh, gear element. So, let us take one a gear system this is a flywheel and this is a shaft and we have one gear and is connected to another gear and we have another flywheel. So, these flywheel are having a large polar moment of inertia. These gears can have a polar moment of inertia, uh, but they will be comparatively smaller as compared to the, the flywheel. So, we will try to develop a gear element uh, so that for this particular uh, gear. So, we will be uh, considering this particular gear pair and because the angular displacement of the second gear is related with the first gear with the gear ratio. So, when we will be discretizing this particular system let us say if you are discretizing, discretizing the, the upper shaft with the gear as one element one and the the second shaft with gear and flywheel as second element and uh, at various positions like this a node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4. So, we will see that at each node we need to assign one angular displacements and <coughs> there are four angular displacements but out of this four are uh, these two are related by gear ratio. So, we will try to eliminate uh, or replace the angular displacement at node 3 by the angular displacement at node 2 and uh, that will give us the elemental equation. So, let us see how we can able to uh, develop uh, this element equation for the gear pair in the subsequent slide. So, we have a gear pair and they have a rotational speed omega 1 and this will be having opposite to that, but this angular speed is related with the pre previous one with the gear ratio. I am taking the torsional oscillation of this, these are the nominal speed, these are the torsional oscillation or uh, angular displacement. I am taking both as uh, counterclockwise direction as positive convention and the sign negative sign will take care of the their direction because uh, this has to rotate opposite to this, but according to this sign convention then they will be related with the uh, negative sign. So, the gear 1 and gear 2 uh, they have angular displacement these two and these two are related by the gear ratio. Now, we will see <coughs> the mo um, uh, moment of inertia, polar moment of inertia, mass moment of inertia of the this gear 
corresponding to the angular displacement uh, or the angular speed of the first gear we have already seen that uh, this can be obtained using equivalent uh, system like this. So, we have first gear which is having polar moment of inertia on uh, this one and we have second gear and polar moment of inertia is this and these two angular displacements as we have seen are related. So, at this position corresponding to the uh, speed of the, the input shaft let us say this is the input shaft. Uh, this moment of inertia can be replaced by equivalent uh, moment of inertia corresponding to the angular displacement at the uh, this node. So, you can able to see this is the angular displace uh, this is the polar moment of inertia of this gear and this is the equivalent uh, polar moment of inertia of this second gear corresponding to the angular displacement here uh, this is the gear ratio. So, this is the total uh, inertia of both the gears would be at uh, node at this node position and this can be replaced uh, can be written in this form corresponding to the angular displacement that 2 uh, 1 this is corresponding to the uh, angular displacement at gear here and this is the second is corresponding to the if we have uh, this is I p 2. So, this particular angular displacement uh, is this one which is which is a flywheel. Now, because uh, if we expand this equation I, I will get back this one. So, this 0 0 entry is not making uh, any difference as compared to the what we got the in the equivalent uh, polar moment of inertia of the both the gear. Now, we will see the strain energy stored in the shaft. So, this particular shaft is the second shaft this shaft and we are trying to see what is the uh, what is the strain energy stored in this and the, what is the work done by the torque at the ends. So, you can able to see this is the shaft at this no, let us say is a node 1, this is a node 2 corresponding to this I am assuming phi z 1 and phi z 2 as the angular displacement, but this phi z 1 is uh, with which is at the gear 2 is related with the angular displacement at, at gear 1 by gear ratio and negative sign because the sign convention we have chosen. Uh, so, you can able to see that now the angular displacement at in the second shaft where the gear 2 is there we need to will be representing the angular displacement corresponding to the gear 1 and here this is the angular displacement corresponding to uh, the flywheel 2. So, here we are not uh, referring to the uh, first shaft speed here whatever the angular displacement of the second second uh, gear is take, uh, flywheel is taking place that itself we are taking it. So, as such in finite element method uh, we are not co converting the whole shaft into the equivalent shaft system. So, this is the original uh, stiffness of the second shaft. So, now the strain energy stored in the shaft will be the torsional stiffness and the relative twist between the two ends of the shaft. So, phi z 2 minus phi z 1. Now, phi z 1 we can able to replace with the, uh, the gear 1 uh, angular displacement. So, this expression we can substitute here. So, this will become positive. So, this is the this term and this is phi z 2. Similarly, the work done by these two torques the reaction torques uh, because of these angular displacements will be given by this and uh, this angular displacement again we can able to replace with respect to the gear 1 angular displacement. So, now we got the energy stored in the system 
Now, we can apply Rayleigh Ritz method basically it minimizes the energy this two energy. So, we can able to see we are minimizing this two energy with respect to the first with respect to the angular displacement corresponding to the gear 1. So, if we differentiate this can able to see the first one if we differentiate del u 1 by del phi z g 1. So, we will get or 2 will get cancelled and phi z g 1 by n plus phi z 2 and then once we again differentiate we will get this. Similarly, we can able to differentiate w 1 with respect to phi z g 1. So, only one term is there. So, we will get t 1 by n. So, these two expressions uh, are here and they can be rearranged uh, like this. I am taking the torque in right side and you can able to see we are minimizing the energy. So, we are after partial differentiation of this we are equating this term equal to 0 and now I am rearranging this equation in this form where torque I am taking this side phi z g 1 and phi z 2 terms are in the left side. Similarly, we can minimize this energy with respect to phi z 2 second variable of the element and using, once you differentiate we will get this expression this is corresponding to the strain energy and this is corresponding to the work done and this again can be rearranged in this form in which we are putting the torque in the other side. Now, this equation in the previous equation uh, this equation we can combine. So, these are the two equations which we got it. Now, I am combining these two equation in a matrix form. So, you can able to see <coughs> this uh, is a vector and these four elements are coming in the matrix and right hand side is a vector containing these two terms. So, these this equation we got it from the strain energy and the work done. Earlier we got the uh, term corresponding to the inertia that was this one. So, that we can add it here to get the overall elemental equation for the gear pair. So, this is the inertia term which we obtained earlier and this is the stiffness term and this is the reactive torque at the end of the shaft. So, this is the gear element equation and this is a very important relation. Using this we can able to analyze the branch system and geared system uh, very easily. Now, uh, once we have developed the gear element we have seen that we got the with the gear element one uh, the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix which are having a, a different form as compared to the conventional uh, finite element of the for the torsional uh, oscillation tor torsional vibration of a, a simple shaft element because now gear ratios are also appearing. Now, with this gear element let us see how we can able to analyze a a, a simple uh, geared system. So, we are taking a simple uh, gear rotor system in which we have a gear pair like this. We have two flywheels at the end and th this two shaft A and B are connected by a gear pair. Various property of the system like diameter of the shaft A, length of the shaft A, uh, also shaft for shaft B, they have different dimensions. So, they are given, modulus of rigidity of the both the shafts are given, uh, even polar moment of inertia of the two flywheel at uh, on shaft A and B are given and even now we are considering the polar moment of inertia, mass moment of inertia of the uh, gears also. So, gear A and B they have uh, some polar mass moment of inertia. Now, with this we can able to 
obtain uh, second polar moment of area using this relations because we know the diameter of the shaft. Uh, this will be using in the elemental equation. So, now you can able to see uh, we have divided this whole system into two element. So, this is, the, is one element in which node 1 and 2 are there in this there element 1. Similarly, uh, this is the second element in which this is a node 3 and 4. So, basically we have, we have divided this into two parts element 1 which is coming here node 1 and 2 and second element is uh, like this in which we have node 3 and 4. Now, once we have divided into two elements we can able to like this we can able to write the you know, elemental equation for each of them and then we can able to see how they, they can be combined. So, some more property like the stiffness we can able to calculate of the shaft 1 and 2 using uh, these relations uh, for the data given in the problem. So, now this is the elemental equation for uh, element 1. So, in element 1 we had node 1 and 2. So, I am again drawing that element 1 node 1 and 2. So, correspondingly we will be having the phi z 1 and phi z 2. Here we are not considering the, the shaft uh, inertia property only whatever the flywheel and the gear polar moment of inertia are there that we have considered. So, in this particular case we have not considered the shaft inertia only the uh, whatever the lump uh, masses are there at the end uh, that has been considered. This is the stiffness matrix uh, conventional stiffness matrix and this is uh, the same vector as this only thing is here this is a displacement this is a inertia, uh, inertia and these are the reaction torque at node 1 and 2 T 1 and T 2. So, uh, for gear element 2 uh, for, for the element 2 we have node 3 and 4. <coughs> so, in, in this if we want to write exactly the same uh, elemental equation for this we will be having phi z 3 and phi z 4 and these are the gear and flywheel which are there at node uh, 3, uh, 3 and 4 and this is the stiffness matrix and these are the reaction torque at the ends. Till now we have not used the gear element uh, because now you can see that node 2 and 3 angular displacements are related. So, as such uh, we should eliminate the uh, this angular displacement at node 3 with the uh, no, node 2 because we know they are related with the gear ratio like this. If you want to do that, so obviously we need to convert uh, this elemental equation uh, according to the geared element which we developed. So, you can able to see this particular moment of inertia, mass moment of inertia which is there at gear uh, node 3 need to be divided by square of the gear ratio. This we need not uh, divide because this particular uh, angular displacement is same as, the, uh, as that of the node 4. This is not related with the gear, uh, gear ratio. So, we are keeping this as it is. Here if we uh, see uh, this term will be divided by gear ratio square and this two by gear ratio as if we refer back the elemental equation this was divided by n square the gear polar mass moment of inertia and these stiffness terms are divided by gear ratio square and gear ratio this will not be changing. And here also the torque will be divided by gear ratio. So, we have divided that also by gear ratio. Now, we will be assembling this equation and this equation and you can able to see in this only 3 uh, variables are there 
corresponding to node 1, 2 and 4. So, this is the assembled equation because now we have enough uh, background how to assemble uh, such equation. So, you can able to see that 3 variables are there and the first two are corresponding to the element 1 and these two are from corresponding to second element. Similarly, here uh, this is corresponding to the second element and these four are from the first element and these are the torque which are get this is at the common uh, node that is node 2 and at junction we know this torque will cancel because th they are reactive torque when once we assemble uh, these elements they should cancel at the junction and apart from this uh, because the uh, the f ends of the uh, this both the shafts are free. So, at node 1 and 4 uh, there will not be torque because they are free end where the flywheels are there. So, corresponding torques will be 0. So, this will be 0, this will be 0, this anyway 0 because of uh, this is at the junction point. Now, once these are 0 this equation we can able to write in this form after simplifying. Uh, in this particular case we have replaced this with for simple harmonic motion as this uh, minus of this. So, this is minus of omega n square and this is displacement vector I have taken outside. So, basically this if we take the determinant of this equal to 0 we will get a polynomial and that will give us the natural frequency of the system because uh, this is a homogeneous equation. And uh, alternately what we can able to do we can develop the eigenvalue as we discussed in the previous lecture. So, we, we will take the inverse of the mass matrix and multiply with k matrix and if we obtain the eigenvalue of this from this we can able to get the natural frequency from eigenvalues and eigenvector will give us the uh, how uh, various nodes are having relative displacements. So, this is corresponding to the first natural frequency you can able to see the node 1 and 2 are having same displacement this is a corresponding to node 4 uh, which is is uh, because of the gear ratio become half otherwise as such th this is a rigid body mode, but these are flexible modes and so uh, we have three natural frequency out of that two are flexible mode and one is rigid body mode. Uh, only uh, this particular this is corresponding to the 4 and this is phi z 1 and phi z 2 phi z 3 is related with this. So, if we divide this by gear ratio we can get the phi z uh, 3 uh, displacement. Now, uh, we will take up another example for a uh, branch system the same elemental uh, element equation for gear where can be used for analyzing the branch system also. So, uh, let us see that particular example. So, basically this is a branch system in which one flywheel is here and we have shaft and we we are having two shafts connected with this by two gear. So, gear B is connected to gear C and D and which is giving power to the flywheel E and F. For simplicity of illustration we have not taken intermediate this, but that also can be taken. So, basically various property of this discs are given uh, for flywheel we have this property and gear also uh, have polar moment of inertia and uh, they are not negligible. Various gear ratio like for between gear B and C is 3 between gear B and D is 4 and various lengths of the shafts are given diameter is also given and shaft modulus of rigidity is also given. So, with this property uh, now you can able to see uh, if we want to analyze this we need to uh, 
take this particular branch as element 1, this we can take as element 2 and third branch as element 3. We can able to write the elemental equation for each of them and then we can assemble them uh, for applying the boundary conditions. So, let us see the first element which is branch A. Here we have one flywheel and this is corresponding to the gear. So, as such in this uh, whatever the torsional elemental equation we develop will be valid for this. So, you can able to see these are the lump masses. Here again we are not considered the uh, inertia of the shaft only uh, masses which are lumped at the ends are considered. So, they are coming at the diagonal and these are the angular displacement corresponding to node uh, this node A and B and this is the stiffness of the shaft ele element 1 and these are the reaction torque at and A and B. Similarly, we can able to write elemental equation for element 2, but here we are considering instead of phi z c, we are considering the phi z b that is a uh, the, the because this gear c and b are connected by and they are related by gear ratio. So, directly we are uh, replacing that particular angular displacement uh, this will remain same as of the and E. So, you can able to see this we need to divide by k ratio square. Similarly, in the stiffness matrix this term will be divided by k ratio square and off diagonal terms will be divided by k uh, ratio only and these will be minus and this torque also we need to divide by uh, gear ratio as we have seen earlier, but this will be unaffected. Similarly, we can able to develop uh, elemental equation for third branch that is and this is the element 3. Here we should have angular displacement phi z d, but we have replaced that by phi z b the gear which is driving this. So, we need to use the gear ratio b to d here in the inertia term also in the stiffness term uh, they will also be negative here. So, you can able to see uh, the torque also we need to uh, divide by the gear ratio. Now, we can combine uh, these you can able to see we will be having only 4 uh, angular displacement at node A B E F at inter at the junction point C and D uh, gear displacements we have already replaced by the gear ratio uh, uh, gear displacement at B. So, you can able to see that because of that uh, during the assembly at this position we have equivalent polar moment of inertia of gear C and D also added to the gear B. Uh, polar moment of inertia. Similarly, this is the stiffness term you can able to see the first four terms are corresponding to element 1. Then uh, these terms are corresponding to second branch and these are corresponding to third branch. And uh, at junction point uh, these uh, torque will cancel each other and uh, now in this particular case also and A, E and F they are free ends. So, torque at those locations will be 0. So, we will be having these torques also as 0 and now you can able to see in the right hand side all terms are 0. Uh, so, this equation can be simplified in this form K minus this M is a conventionally uh, we have been doing this to converting the for free vibration this equation of motion in this particular form. So, if we take the determinant of this equal to 0 we can uh, get the frequency equation or we can go for the eigenvalue problem in which we can or uh, this d in this particular case is defined as 
inverse of m into k. So, if you obtain the eigenvalue of d, we can able to uh, get the natural frequency and the mode shape also. So, for given data uh, various stiffness terms we can able to calculate and this is the stiffness matrix and this is the mass matrix corresponding to the various property of the uh, branch system. And if we solve the eigenvalue problem, we will get four natural frequencies. One of them is 0 because is free free and conditions are there. So, we expect one rigid body mode, but these are flexible modes. Even we can able to obtain the eigen vectors and we have drawn this. So, basically this is a branch 1 and so this is corresponding to element 1 is corresponding to element 2 is corresponding to element 3. This is the position where the gear is connected. So, for a unit this, this is for 0 natural frequency. So, we expect a rigid body mode. So, no, node 1 and 2 or node A and B will be having same displacement 1. Uh, we expect this to have same displacement, but because of the gear ratio this will be divided 1 will be divided by uh, 2. So, this sorry uh, this is 3 gear ratio is we have 2 sets of gear ratio. So, one is the 3 another is a 4. So, you can able to see that the difference. So, this is this is 1 by 3 this is nothing but 1 by 3 or, or this one is 1 by 3 and this is 1 by 4. So, this is a gear ratio 3 and gear ratio 4. So, you can able to see that the whole uh, the second element and third element are having or same there is as such there is no related twist between the ends. Similarly, we can able to plot the mode shape for flexible mode that is second mode. So, we can able to see this is now they have relative twist at end A and B. C and D uh, will be 1 by 3 and 1 by 4 times of the this particular height from here to here because they are very close. So, it looks at the same point, but they are not at the same point. Then the and E and F will be having different displacement. So, they can be connected. So, this is the mode shape corresponding to this this natural frequency and this is the point where the gears are connected to each other. Similarly, other modes can be plotted. You can able to see their relative positions are changing. Uh, here because this amplitude is very less. So, C D appears to be at the same position, but they are not at the same position. Similarly, this is the for fourth mode. Here now uh, they are distinct. You can able to see now B is having opposite motion as compared to A and now <coughs> we have uh, when we are dividing by 1 by 3 of this C is coming here and 1 by 4 then we are getting a D point here and these are the uh, other angular dis, uh, displacement at and E and F. So, this is the mode shape corresponding to the fourth natural frequency which is flexible mode. Now, we will take the case when the gears are pair when the, the two teeth when they are in contact uh, because at that point uh, we have direct contact between two teeth and uh, generally in gears we have a line contact, but uh, when it is transmitting power that particular line contact becomes area contact and that particular stresses is governed by the Hertzian stress theory. Generally, they are nonlinear in nature uh, that is uh, the force and deformation relations are nonlinear in nature, but uh, uh, this particular case we are considering the linear stiffness at the contact point and if there is a flexibility which is linear, how we can able to uh, develop the uh, governing equation for such gear pair we will try to illustrate uh, and we will try to obtain the equation of motion for such cases. So, 
in this particular case, uh, we are taking basically this kind of uh, gear pair. You can able to see uh, this is a gear one and gear two. These are flywheel. Uh, these are two flywheel, and in between the gear pair, uh, we are considering the flexibility due to the contact between two teeth, and that <coughs> we can able to model like this. So this is a, this is the pitch circle of the gear one, and this is of gear two, and uh, whatever the flexibility is there between the gear two during the contact, we are representing that as a linear spring. So this is basically a linear spring. That means the extension or compression of this would take place during the motion because these two are having oscillation the torsional oscillations like this and because of this you can able to expect that this particular spring will get extension or compression depending upon the relative angular displacements of these and that will not only will depend upon the relative twist but also the diameter of uh, this pitch diameter of the gears so if pitch diameter is d1 and d2 then uh, that particular extension whatever there will be governed by this uh, diameters also. So, now let us see how we can able to analyze such system. So, I am um, first considering the the first flywheel uh, which is here this particular flywheel and I am trying to attach phi z 1 is the angular displacement of this, phi z 2 is angular displacement of this, phi z 3 is angular displacement of this, phi z 4 is angular displacement of this. Now, we can able to see that these two angular displacements are as such not related with the gear ratio because now there is a flexible element in between this. So, basically these two are now independent uh, angular displacements. So, in this particular case, uh, if our I am considering the angular displacement of this as positive in this direction, uh, there will be torque from the shaft direction torque which will be coming which will be given as this. Now, you can able to see uh, this is the only torque which is acting on this. So, using Newton's law, we can able to equate this torque which will be in the opposite direction to the displacement to the inertia. So, this is one of the equation of motion. Similarly, we can able to write the for gear 1 that is I p 2. Uh, so, in this particular case again the displacement direction is this positive direction. This torque will act uh, in opposite direction to the previous one here this torque will be acting here and apart from this there is a flexibility of the of the linear spring. So, for that case you can able to see this is the gear 1 having radius d 1 by 2 and this kg is the stiffness of the linear spring and relative extension of the spring will be phi z 2 minus d 2 by 2 phi z 3. So, relative extension of the spring will be or uh, if we go back here you can see relative extension of this will be how much angular displacement of this is taking place and how much angular displacement of this is taking place and this diameter will give basically what is the actual extension of the spring of this end and this end. So, that is why we have used diameter there. So, that we can able to get the actual extension. So, basically within the bracket term is actual extension of the spring the at the contact point. So, uh, this particular force uh, this particular torque this is the force and the torque will be again if we divide uh, multiply by d 1 by 2. 
so this will give us the torque which will be acting on the gear 1 so this is the force of the linear spring into d1 by 2 will give the torque so this particular torque will be acting opposite to the so this torque will be acting opposite to the angular displacement and this free body diagram of this we have written here so you can able to see this is the governing equation this is the torque which is in this direction positive direction this particular torque is opposite to the uh, angular displacement should be equal to the inertia of the this gear 2. So, once we obtain this uh, we can able to obtain the free body diagram of the second gear that is having I p 3 in this particular case also I am taking the angular displacement downward as positive direction. The torque from the uh, uh, from the linear spring will be given by this. So, you can able to see this is the force and this is the now we can able to uh, write the uh, free body diagram for the second gear having polar moment of inertia of I p 3. We are taking the angular displacement direction positive in the downward direction from the linear spring at the contact point we will get this particular torque this is basically first this term is force now for torque we need to now multiply by d 2 by 2 earlier we divide uh, multiplied by the d 1 by 2 now we need to multiply by d 2 by 2 and then from the second shaft that means uh, we have taken care of this but this shaft is connected with this second gear so this will also give the reaction torque to this because there will be relative twist between this two and sub the shaft. So, this will be opposite to the displacement. So, k t 2 phi z 3 minus phi z 4. So, this is uh, reac uh, reaction torque from the shaft, this is reaction torque from the uh, contact point linear spring, and you can able to see now this is the equation for this opposite to the angular displacement this is in same direction as the angular displacement should be equal to the inertia. So, this is the third equation of motion then the last disc having I p 4 in this only one torque will be acting and that will be in the the value of the torque will be this, but direction will be opposite, but this case they will be in the same direction. So, this is the, the torque equilibrium uh, of this particular uh, flywheel. So, this is the fourth equation. So, basically all this equation first equation, second equation, third equation and fourth equation are the governing equation of this particular whole system they can be combined in the matrix form like this. So, you can able to see this is the mass matrix this is the stiffness matrix a solution of such system we already done earlier. So, we I will not illustrate the solution of this, but how the equation of motion can be obtained I have illustrated here using this Newton's law. Now, the same problem we will see using the transfer matrix method. So, in transfer matrix method uh, we need to let us say this is station 0, station 1, station 2, station 3. So, we have three uh, four stations from 0 to uh, 3. Now, we can able to uh, see I have tilted the same thing and here we have 0 station. 1 station, 2 station and 3 station. Now, between station 1 and 2 we can able to write the state vector. So, write of station 1 and station 0 is related with uh, point matrix, field matrix and again point matrix. 
So, this we have already conversant with how to write, uh, relate the state vector at two ends of this. Similarly, at the right of 3 and right of 2, we can able to uh, relate uh, right of 3 and left of 2, we can able to relate using this. And in between the right of 1 and left of 2, let us say we have this relation, where f is the field matrix corresponding to the linear spring. Now, we need to develop this one, others are uh, we know. So, now we will see how we can able to develop the field matrix for the that linear spring corresponding to the flexibility of the gear pair. So, this is the linear spring having stiffness this. Now, at two ends uh, we have the linear displacement uh, these because this angular displacement if we multiply by the radius we can get the li uh, linear displacements of the two ends of the spring. And if we divide torque by the uh, this uh, respective diameter of the two uh, gears, we can able to get the force. So, basically we converted uh, linear displacement and force uh, of for this linear spring. Now, we can able to see that we this particular torque uh, this particular force is coming from the stiffness of the spring and relative extension of the spring at two ends. So, these are the relative extension. So, this is one of the relation and this relation we can able to write in terms of uh, this you can able to see we have written this expression. We have uh, we written phi z 2 uh, left of that and all other terms I have taken this side. Apart from this that because there is no other force in between the two ends of the force should be same. So, this is the two forces are same at two ends and this we have written in this form. So, basically now you can able to see we have related the state vector left of 2, left of 2 and other is right of 1. So, this two equation 1 and 2 we can able to combine in this form in which this is the state vector left of 2 and this state vector right of 1 and this is the required f matrix for the gear which we we were we were interested to obtain so once we have this the, then we can able to uh, we can able to uh, obtain the governing equation for the whole system because now we can able to uh, combine these because now we can able to see we can able to uh, substitute this here and uh, so we will get and even we can able to substitute this here so we will get overall transfer matrix and then we can able to apply boundary conditions those uh, things we already we have illustrated previously. So, main focus of this is of this presentation is to how to develop the this f matrix for the gear pair flexibility element. Now, uh, the same gear element we will develop uh, using the finite element method and uh, let us see how we can able to develop the finite element method for this finite element for this pair. So, same uh, this is the linear displacement and these are the forces at two ends. Now, you can able to see that uh, for the spring simple linear spring the elemental equation we can able to write it as this is the stiffness and these are the linear displacements and these are the forces. And these uh, we can able to rearrange in this form so that we have angular displacements here and so just we have rearranged this like this there is no ch only uh, two we have taken this side and the same this equation we can able to rearrange in the further uh, like this in which even we can able to write this in the torque form so the angular displacement and torque form so once we have the elemental equation for that uh, spring element we can able to 
or develop the, the elemental equation for the whole, whole system. So, that means we have developed for this and the spring and this. So, element 1, 2, 3 they can be combined and then we can able to op obtain the boundary condition. So, the main focus of this elucidation is that this is the elemental equation for the, the spring which is there between uh, the two gears because of its flexibility. So, once we know this we can able to apply the whatever the procedure we developed earlier uh, to analyze the this kind of system. So, uh, today we uh, develop the gear element initially with the finite element method and uh, through illustration we see, uh, we have seen that how we can able to analyze a simple gear pair or even a branch system using the finite element method. Then we took up another interesting case in which when there is a flexibility at the gear pair uh, contact point then how we can able to analyze such system. So, for such system we have uh, developed the equations first using the Newton's second law of motion then uh, we develop the transfer matrix method for such flexibility and even uh, we have developed the finite element for such flexibility of the gear pair. And once we have these elements or the field matrix in the form of uh, uh, matrices then we can able to easily analyze uh, such system easily. So, with this uh, we can able to see that uh, especially the finite element method is very powerful tool for analyzing uh, a rotor system. We have seen this uh, uh, for torsional case, but in future we will be applying similar uh, approaches for transverse vibration uh, 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 transfer vibrations also. So, in the subsequent class uh, now we will start with the transverse vibrations especially for the multi degree of freedom system because till now we have considered for transverse vibration only the single mass rotor system, but we have not considered a multi mass rotor system. So, in this subsequent class we will we'll be dealing with uh, transverse vibration for multi degree of freedom system.